On this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly, Nico Hall of Fame inductees and the Young Art Showcase. All this and more coming up next. Welcome to this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. I'm your host, Logan Breen. Nico has been home to many great athletes and teams over its 21 year history. Nick and Tyler introduce you to the Class 2019 Hall of Fame inductees. On February 8th, the Hall of Fame induction ceremony will be held to honor athletes and teams who have been nominated by the school. It recognizes past athletes who had a high amount of success as a high school athlete and beyond. This annual event honors each athlete and team for its achievements. They get nominated by somebody in the community or somebody within uh, the building. And then we meet as a committee and uh, we discuss it uh, as a members of the committee on who's going to be that uh, class for that year. So this year we have two former swimmers. We have a former girls soccer player. We have one of our former, now uh, retired baseball coaches, uh, Coach Renner. And we're also inducting the 2007 cross country team and the 2008 uh, boys swim team. Megan Oyster is one of the players being inducted this year. She is now a professional soccer player for the Seattle Reign. It feels amazing. I'm just super proud and honored to be on this list of people um, inducted into the Hall of Fame. I know how much that means to me and um, just Naperville as a city and um, Nico as a school. Come out and see the ceremony in the main gym between the sophomore and varsity basketball games on February 8th. For Wildcat Weekly, along with Nick Sokolowski, I'm Tyler Orlo. The Young Artist Competition is now open for entries. Connor takes a look into what this event is all about. The Young Artist Showcase is a program sponsored by the Naperville uh, Sister Cities Commission uh, that invites young people of any one of the 203 or 204 school systems, middle or high school, age 13 to 18, to enter a work uh, no larger than 24 by 36 into a competition around a certain theme that is a part of Sister Cities International. The theme this year is Global Citizens, Resilient Communities. Students have the choice to kind of create any sort of art that they wish that sort of communicates that theme. The showcase features many different forms of art. It can see pieces from oil paintings to a more traditional canvas or paper painting or drawing. There's a bridge across uh, right near the Blue Sushi restaurant and the Indigo Hotel. There's a bunch of uh, artwork uh, displayed there. And those are types of things that we just want kids to have the opportunity to have their work be in a gallery. Um, our awards dinner that we have is at the Naperville Art League. And again, the judges are working, practicing professional artists. To learn more about how to enter the showcase, visit www.sistercities.org slash YAAS and go to the How to Enter tab. The showcase is open to entries till March 8th. Remember to submit your work before the deadline. And for Wildcat Weekly, I'm Connor Juarez. With many students preparing for the SAT and ACT this April, Peyton looks into the best fit for you. Many juniors are currently getting ready for the upcoming testing season. SAT testing is coming up on April 9th. The SAT is um, a standardized test that many colleges and universities require as part of their application process. The SAT and the ACT, they're both college entrance exams that are accepted by all colleges in the country. Um, the SAT gives you a little bit more time uh, than the ACT does. There are many opportunities inside and outside of school to help students prep for the SAT and the ACT. College test prep is one of the opportunities that is available to juniors in order to help them bring up their test scores. Students can also use tutors or websites like Khan Academy when preparing for testing. Well, we have a, a class in the business department called College Test Prep, which prepares kids to um, take the ACT or the SAT. It's daily practice. There are also classes that are offered in the evening uh, from outside agencies. Students can sign up to take the SAT on the College Board website and the ACT on the ACT website. 
Students can retake both tests as many times as they need to, but they will be required to pay for their own retakes. Good luck testing juniors, and for Wildcat Weekly, I'm Peyton Williams. With home access, opening class options for next year, Haley takes a look at how students can fill their graduation requirements. As many teachers have been discussing for the past few weeks, classes for next year are open for selection on home access until January 31st. Many students are conflicted as to what classes to take and how to organize their schedules to be ready for graduation. Mr. Statt is a guidance counselor here at NEQA who helps many students learn and understand what classes they must take to be ready to graduate their senior year. You have to have four years of English, three years of math, three years of science, uh, two and a half years of social studies, um, uh, four years of PE, health is, is one of those during sophomore year, um, and uh, consumer economics, that's a senior year course also met by AP macroeconomics, um, and then additional electives uh, beyond that to get to a total of 24 credits to graduate. Most people go to the guidance website for information on classes, but Mr. Stat offers an alternative way to prepare. The best resource is your guidance counselor, and you should be working on building a relationship with that person uh, because they can really help walk you through um, not only preparing to graduate, but being prepared for college admissions. Many seniors at NEQA have great advice for juniors and underclassmen. Maggie Peeler used her time at NEQA to help herself prepare for college. I'm a PE leader, a senior advisor, and a yearbook editor-in-chief, and those are all really unique classes, and I just think like you need to put yourself out there and apply to things, even if you don't know if you're going to get in, because more likely than not, not like you're going to grow from the experience, and overall it'll help you graduate and like be ready for like future changes. Remember to fill out your schedule on home access on January 31st. And for Wildcat Weekly, I'm Haley Allen. The path of becoming a teacher is different for all. Eli takes a look into different ways to get into the educational field. In recent years, there has been a decline in the amount of undergraduate students pursuing a career in education. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, the amount of newly certified teachers in the United States began to drop around the 1990s. But the demand for teachers can hopefully be fulfilled by those who choose to enter the field later in their lives. I graduated college with a degree in business administration and public relations and I went on three job interviews and through that process I decided that business is a great route but it wasn't the route for me so I decided to go back to school so I could pursue a teaching uh, degree and certificate. From a survey of 138 teachers at Nequa Valley, about 33% answered that teaching was not their first career out of college. Of the 33%, about 11% answered that they had three or more careers prior to gaining a teaching certification. Despite these varied career paths, they all still share similar goals. I think that I was one of those people who was born to be a teacher. Um, I grew up with a mom for a teacher and I just always even played school when I was a kid. Teachers aren't just teaching you the content. We're focusing so much more on developing students to be successful, not just at work, but in, in life and where you feel inspired and where you feel passion. Nequa offers three education courses, Early Childhood Teaching Lab and Education 1 and 2. In Early Childhood Teaching Lab, students work with three and four-year-olds in the Wee Wildcat Preschool. Education 1 offers an introduction to becoming an educator, while Education 2 provides a first-hand experience. Through this class, students are allowed to intern in a classroom of their choice. The best part about this class was not only getting the teaching experience, but also being able to see the kids every day. They were excited to see me just as, as much as it, I was excited to see them, and it was so rewarding to know that they really enjoyed me being there. If you are considering becoming a teacher, be sure to look into taking one of the education courses offered here in Nequa. And for Wildcat Weekly, I'm Eli Abushan. And congrats to the dance team for advancing to the IHSA state competition in Bloomington this weekend. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you for watching this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. Have a good weekend, Wildcats.